This is section 6.4, Confidence Intervals for Variance and Standard Deviation. So note, we're introducing a new Greek variable. Chi is the Greek symbol. It looks like a fancy X, and it's pronounced chi. Chi-squared distribution. In manufacturing, it is necessary to control the amount that a process varies. For instance, an automobile part manufacturer must produce thousands of parts to be used in the manufacturing process. It is important that the part vary little or not at all. How can you measure and consequently control the amount of variation in the parts? You can start with a point estimate. The point estimate for sigma squared is s squared and the point estimate for sigma is s. The most unbiased estimate for a population variance is the standard deviation variance. So recall, to go from the variance to a standard deviation, you take the square root, and to go vice versa from a variance to, a, I'm sorry, a standard deviation to a variance, you square the value. Definition of chi distribution. If a random sample variable x has a normal distribution, then the distribution chi squared is equal to n minus 1, s squared over sigma squared. Forms a chi squared distribution for samples of any size n greater than 1. There are several properties of chi squared distribution. 1. All values of chi squared are greater than or equal to 0. 2. The chi-square distribution is a family of curves, each determined by the degrees of freedom to form a confidence interval, sigma squared. Use the chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equal to one less than the sample size. So we have that formula, degrees of freedom is n minus one. The total area under the chi-square distribution curve is equal to one. So no matter what part of the curve we are, are the gray curve, the blue, the dotted curves, the area of the curve is equal to 1. 4. The chi-square distribution is positively skewed, and therefore the distribution is not symmetric. Do we see all these little lumps? Right? And those vary according to our sample size. Ideally, we like a bell shape, a uniform distribution, standard normal, approximately normal, all these phrases we've used in the past. Here, we're not going to have that shape. We will get closer to it as our degrees of freedom get bigger than 30 or closer to 30. We see it starts looking a bit more normal. Lastly, the chi distribution is different for each number of degrees of freedom, as, no, as known in the picture. It is the degrees of freedom. As the degrees of freedom increase, the chi distribution approached a normal distribution. So just to emphasize, as our degrees of freedom were smaller, it was more skewed right. But as we get a larger sample size, it becomes more evenly distributed, more symmetric. More on chi-square distribution tails. There are two critical values for each confidence. The chi-r square represents the right critical value, and chi l squared represents the left tail critical value. Since the curve is not symmetric, the distribution is different for each tail. And we can highlight that in that last picture, where we take a look in the blue, our, our area, and we see that those blue values are not the same. They, they represent different values. How to find the critical value using a chart. Given a sample size, find your degrees of freedom, and we know that df is equal to n minus 1. 2. With requested confidence interval c, use the formulas to develop the proportion for the left and right tail. So we're going to use these formulas. To find chi r squared, we're going to use n minus c over 2. To find chi l squared, we're going to use 1 plus c over 2. 
that along with our degrees of freedom, we can determine our chi-square distribution and we'll be using table six. So in this module, there is a file and it's titled Larson for your, um, your, your author and charts. And it has all the charts we'll use for this text. This is chart six. Okay, let's go ahead and do an example. Find the critical values of chi r squared and chi l squared for 95% confidence interval when your sample size is 18. Okay, let's begin with our degrees of freedom. So df is found by n minus one. So 18 minus one, we get 17 for our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, we find 17. Okay, we have to match it with the appropriate chi value. We have to find two. We're first going to find chi r squared. And the formula for that is 1 minus c over 2. And our c is our confidence interval, which is 95%. So I have 1 minus 0.95 over 2. We calculate that. And we get 0 0.025. OK, now we must find the other tail, chi l. Chi l squared is found by, we have a formula above, 1 plus c over 2. All right, and for that, we have 1 plus 0.95 over 2. And we get. 0.975. So along with these numbers, we're going to match them up above. And we see them highlighted in our little text. We have chi L, which is 0.975, and chi R, which is 0 0.025. And we can see our critical value. So our answer for our critical values would be 0.7. 0.5, 0 0.5, and 30.191. Those are critical values. So we have chi l squared and chi r squared. We're going to use these to find our error. You can use the critical values chi r squared and chi l squared to construct confidence intervals for a population variance and standard variation. The best point estimate for the variance is uh, s squared, and the best point estimate for the standard deviation is s. Because chi squared distribution is not symmetric, the confidence for the confidence interval for sigma squared is not written as plus or minus e. You must separate calculation for endpoints of the confidence intervals as shown in the next definition. Definition for C confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation. The C confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation are, so you know one and do the work for one and the other one you already have most of the work so you just apply one more step. Your formula is 1 minus 1, n minus 1, s squared over chi r squared is less than sigma squared less than n minus 1 s squared over chi l squared. So once you find your answer for your variance to find your standard deviation, just take the square root of both of your answers to get the standard deviation. So don't worry about calculating it twice. Guidelines. So guidelines for construction a confidence interval for variance and standard deviation. One, verify that the population has a normal distribution. Identify the sample statistic and degrees of freedom. TF is equal to n minus one. Find the point estimate and variance s squared. This will be the standard deviation squared. Find the critical values chi r squared and chi l squared that correspond to the given level of confidence C and the degrees of freedom.
So for this, make a note. Use the chart. Five, find the left and right endpoints and form a confidence interval for the variance, population variance. And then take the square root of your answers. Find the inter confidence interval for the population standard deviation by taking the square root of each endpoint. All right, let's do an example. Now, sadly, for finding the standard deviation working with confidence intervals, we do not have a calculator function that spits out an answer. So we have to do the process. All right, you have that checklist above in your previous page. So our first rule says, make sure it's a normal distribution, right? Well, let's first read our question. You randomly select and weigh 30 samples of an allergy medicine. The sample standard deviation is 1.2 milligrams. Assuming the weights are normally distributed, construct a 99% 99 confidence, 99 confidence interval for the population variance in standard deviation. All right, so we want to make sure it's approximately normal. Yes, it's normal. We have that phrase that it's normally distributed. Two, find our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is found by n minus one. So what is our n? We have an n of 30. Okay, so 30 minus one, we get 29 for our degrees of freedom. Two, find the point estimate variance, variance squared. All right, step three, we want to find S squared. All right, so we're told that we have a sample standard deviation of 1.2. So we have a S standard deviation of 1.2. Zero. So therefore, our standard deviation squared, we square that number. You punch that into our calculator and get 1.44. So our S squared is 1.44. Step four, find your critical values, chi R squared and chi L squared. All right, so we have some formulas to follow, right? For step four, if I want to find chi bar squared, we're going to use the formula 1 minus c over 2. And to find chi L squared, we're going to use a similar formula, right? But instead, it's going to be a plus 1 plus c over 2. OK, let's input those values. What is our c? We want a 99% confidence interval. So therefore, our C is 0.99. All right, let's calculate that. 1 minus 0.99 divided by 2. We'll use our calculator for this. This gives us 0 0.005. Now, chi L squared, we're going to use 1 plus 0.99 over 2. With the help of our calculator, we get 0 0.995. Cool. Now we're going to use these values along with our degrees of freedom. And we're going to use chart 6. And that's our chi distribution. So that we get chi r squared is 52.336 and chi l squared will be 13.121. Okay, those are the numbers we're going to use in our formula. Step five. Step five reads, we're going to use that formula to 
find our variance, confidence interval. This is your variance. Okay, so let's write down our formula. Our formula is n minus 1 times your standard deviation squared all over chi r squared is less than sigma squared is less than n minus 1 times s squared all over chi l squared. All right, let's go ahead and put these values. So we have our n of 30, 30 minus 1, times our s squared. We found s squared is 1.44 over chi r squared, which is 52.336. And n minus 1 times s squared, same numerator. 30 minus 1, or you can just write 29, times 1.44 all over chi L squared. And we saw that chi L was 13.121. 13.121. All right. We have to use our calculator. If we do, we get our variance. Confidence interval. Confidence interval. And we get a value of rounding, we get 80. And 3.18. So we can write like that, or we can write it using parentheses like we have before. So we have 80 as our lowest possible variance value, and 3.18 as our highest variance value with 99% confidence. That's, that's one of our answers. Lastly, we also want to find a standard deviation confidence interval. So what do we do? We take the square root of our answers. So we have the square root of 80. That will give us our standard deviation. Notice there's no square. And the square root of 3.18. We take the square root of those values. And we get 0.89 is less than the standard deviation of square root of 3.18, sorry, 3.18. Use your calculator, you get 1.78. You can also write it with the parentheses. So 0.89 and 1.78. And this would be our standard deviation, confidence interval. And we have answered our question. Our question was asking for Construct a 99% confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation. We did both of them. We did population variance, confidence interval, and standard deviation, confidence interval. All right. Let me separate that work here so it doesn't blend together. So we have now done the confidence interval for a standard deviation and variance. I have uploaded a video that shows you how to punch things in your calculator, but again, there's no automatic shortcut. You have to go through the process of doing this manually with, of course, with the aid of your calculator. So all we do is follow this guideline we have above. In case you're unsure or don't know where to start, it has it numbered down for you so you know step one, step two, and, ev and everything else that you need. All right, if you have any questions, please email me or post them in our discussion board. Thank you.